Welcome to Contractor Cuts, where we cover the good, the bad, and the ugly of growing a successful contracting company. Welcome back to Contractor Cuts. My name is Clark Turner. I'm Jared Flo. Thanks for joining us again this week. So this is part three of three. If you have not listened to the first two, Check them strongly out. suggest yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, first one, we talk about identifying who you actually are, what your company is, and not getting lulled to sleep by the success of the last two years in this pandemic. Yeah. Last week, we talked about how to diversify, and we'll probably go deeper into this in a future one, but how to diversify into multiple different uh, uh, markets, right? Yeah. Uh, you've, you're in one. How do I get to where I can be a little more recession-proof, where I can service both homeowners and the industry and, and do uh, uh, multiple areas of expertise that, that we can service throughout uh, a recession or any sort of losses? Right. Um, that is the first two weeks. This week, we are talking about what we call the grind list, but this is – if you are starting a secondary product or if your current product is kind of slowing down and you need more work, these are the six things that we have written out that says, do this and you will have clients by the end of the month guaranteed. Yeah. So yeah. the grind list, super simple. These are just some ideas that we have used in the past, kind of the ways that we have brought in business. And this is kind of a cheat sheet for you as a, as a contractor listening to this as to how to generate additional leads, additional clients um, uh, that, that you can churn out. It's the it's the thing that we use to uh, grow and develop a pipeline yeah. that we haven't needed to do over the last two years. Correct. Because Correct. They've been, jobs have been just dropping in our laps, and so we haven't even needed to pull this list out. Yeah. But as we start looking forward into the future, this last two years is not going to be the norm of the existence in the contracting world and getting back to the basics. You're shaking trees. Yep. You're developing your pipeline by going out and doing some of these things, strategic things that can be done that really help put yep. jobs in your pipeline. First thing on our list, I did this for probably two years when I started this company. Mm-hmm. When, when I first got started. And it is a grind. <laughs> it is a grind. Yeah. And I still, to this, actually till last week, mm-hmm. get phone calls from this yep. that I did over 15 years ago, mm-hmm. I'm still getting calls on it. What I did was I went to every single real estate office in the city of Atlanta and the suburbs around Atlanta and pitched myself and our company. We went to every single office. I You call them up and say, hey, my name's Clark. I'm with X, Y, and Z. We do uh, renovations for real estate agents and their clients. I love to bring breakfast and sponsor one of your sales meetings. Which typically every real estate agent company that has multiple agents will have an event or or, or a get together once a week once or a month, at least usually. once a month. Yeah. yeah. And so they're like, we're the first Tuesday of every month or every other Thursday on, uh, you know, throughout whatever it is. Right. Say, great. What, how how to, can I sign up for next month? Great. Yeah. You can come just bring uh, breakfast. We usually have about 50 agents there. Yeah. That's it. Cost me no money. Cost uh, outside of breakfast, you know, yeah. three, four dozen donuts. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'd really spend a lot of money and go to Chick-fil-A, Ooh-wee. right? Bring them the breakfast. Mm-hmm. They give you five minutes at the beginning of their meeting and you stand up there and say, hi, I'm Clark. I do this. Uh, we handle all of your headaches for you. Uh, if you have a client, if you have an inspection report, send it to us. We will get you pricing on it. If you were just trying to price it out for the sale of your property, we can look at it and blah, 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 blah. What are, what are some of the pain points that real estate agents deal with when they have to interact with contractors yep. or dealing with a client? Client has a, a different list of things. What are some of the pain points that you solve, right? Yep. And just get up there and say, when you deal with this, I handle that for you. We, we can come in and repaint a house if your buyer hates the paint. That's easy. I can handle that for you. New floor, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Here, here's the key to this one. Two things. One, I wait till the end of the meeting and I sit there in the back. And at the end, I have four people walk up to me saying, do you all refinish hardwoods? Right. Asking me questions about properties that they have. And I usually, I'd say 90% of the time, walk out of those meetings with three or four estimates yep. that need to go get done. Yeah. Uh, the second reason I love this is... When you are buying or selling a house, there is one person that you listen to and do whatever they say, and that's your real estate agent. So when your real estate agent says, hey, 
use ProServe, use this guy. He is amazing. He does all of all of my clients work. Mm -hmm. You're not shopping it. You're calling right. that guy because that's right. who your agent said to use. Right. And so you and sometimes you get you get a, a, a double work. Yeah. Right. The the agents working for the seller and the buyer. Yep. And so they'll help get the house ready and prepped for the sale. Introduce and then the buyer, the buyer comes in and says, hey, I want to blow the floors out. I want to blow the walls yep. out. And you get a double double yep. work on the same property. Yep. When you're uh, when you're trying to create word of mouth about you, there's no better way to do it than than going to a real estate agent, having real estate agents in, uh, that like you mm -hmm. and servicing them, making their job easy, then they refer you to their clients, right? Absolutely. So if I'm communicating with their clients and making them look good, then they're going to keep referring me. Yeah. So that's number one on my list. Yeah. Go to call 10 real estate agents today or real estate agency offices today and say, when's your next sales meeting? Can I bring breakfast and mm -hmm. sponsor the sponsor the meeting? Yeah. That will get you jobs by the end of the month. Mm -hmm. And the, the second one is uh, however you need to do it, gathering as large a list, whether you're scraping the internet, scraping Facebook, mm -hmm. whatever you need to do to gather a list of emails for real estate agents yep. and do an email blast out to every real estate agent uh, contact that you can get and offer your services as a, at, a, at a discounted rate to let them see your process, yep. to let them see your product, how easy it is for them to work with you that will stick in their brain for when they're dealing with their clients. So I, I uh, I'm started an HVAC company, ended up selling it to the guy that was running it, cause, and he moved it to a different state. Oh, I like this example. He started example. In, in a different state and said, okay, I'm starting in the city. It's where I, 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 I want to go. I, I'm kind of starting over now. What, how do I turn up business? And I said, you are going to scrape the internet, all, all five days this week, Monday through Friday, I want you to go to every single real estate agency uh, listing, every property managers. They have their emails listed on their website because they're trying to market to clients. Yep. Go in there, cut and paste every single email so you can do an email blast. And I don't know how legal this is, but yeah. we, we he gathered all their emails, mm -hmm. put them all on the list, and actually started emailing them one at a time. He cut here, paste here. Uh, Sent a, a direct message had, to a person. And, yeah. and had a, um, uh, a template email mm -hmm. that just said, hi, my name is so-and-so. I, uh, I do HVAC in the, this uh, area. Love to show you what I can do. I'm offering discount to you so you can test out my, our, my HVAC. I'd love to come service your unit for $25. Bucks. Um, and if, you know, if I can impress you, then I, I hope that I can earn your, your business to where you refer me to your clients. Mm -hmm. He did that, probably sent it to a thousand emails, and he called me. and was like, "Clark, you've wasted my week. Yeah. I've doing, I've done nothing. Like, I cannot believe nobody's I just did emailed that. me back. I sent a, a thousand, over a thousand emails, and got zero responses. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, it's okay. Keep doing. It. It's a numbers game, mm -hmm. right? Two weeks later, he had like four people all email him in a matter of two days that were like." Hey, I saw your email. Thanks for sending it to me. I got a I got a full HVAC system that needs to be changed out. Can you do that for me? Mm -hmm. Hey, I need this. My I got a listing that's about to go under contract, but they want this, this, and this done. Can you do that for me? And all of a sudden, it just started ding, 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 rolling ding, ding, ding. in. Yep. Emailing, cold call, not even cold calling, cold emailing, mm -hmm. and introducing yourself, offering your services at a discount to the people that uh, that homeowners trust. Property managers, real estate agents are are my favorite. Mortgage lenders, maybe, but I, I would stick with the first two. Um, but that is ideally number two on our list, a great way to meet new people and get new clients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the next one is Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that we've done a lot. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's just a great resource. Every every city, every town has multiple different Facebook groups that are that are out there for homeowners, for investors, for uh, any kind of industry that you're trying to get into. There is a Facebook group for your specific city, for your specific state. For your, like they're they're all out there, and you just go in and you start joining them. Yep. Joining them, join, and then what a lot of what we've done is you go through and you just you, you look through people's questions you look through things that people are saying and you can respond to them and say yep i do this yeah right and and 
uh, it just starts to, there's so many opportunities for jobs that come up that people are just posting out there. Yeah. And it, it's just a, it's a pool of information and a pool of requests. In the Facebook group, team up with a friend. If you if you're an electrician, find a plumber buddy of yours that's in, that's also trying to market. And when you're in the group, ha- suggest each other. Say, hey, this is a great guy you should use because referrals are always better than, hey, call me. Yeah. Right. And so being able to refer each other to people is a great way to win in those Facebook groups. Yep. Yep. No, the next one down, number four, emailing all of your past clients. This is one of the first things we do with new cli- new contractors that partner up with ProServe Alliance. Mm-hmm. Uh, we say email every past client that you have. There's three different types of clients that you have. First client, I had a bad experience uh, with with your contracting company. Why would I use you again? You apologize and you explain that you have done things to correct the issue, right? Mm-hmm. You email that client who you had a bad experience with or they had a bad experience with you. Right. And you say, listen, hey, I just want you to know that I, like, I know that that job didn't go well mm-hmm. and uh, I can see that. And from your perspective, I can understand how you were probably pretty frustrated throughout that that process. So first off, let me say I'm sorry. I've I've working on my processes and my my clients uh, experience, and mm-hmm. I just want you to know that things have changed totally since last time uh, you worked with us. And if you ever need anything else, let me know. I'd love to help you. The second client experience good is a good co- yeah. good experience. Hey, do you have any per- person that uh, would like to work with us? You know, we're always we we live and die by referrals. So it, it, if you have anyone that is looking for. Uh, whatever it is, a new kitchen or mm-hmm. bathroom renovation or whatever you, you do, uh, I will I will love for you to send an introductory email with us um, that would really help us out. Can you review us on Google, review us on yeah, Facebook? That's what I was, I was going to say, Google reviews too. Yep. That's a big one to ask at that point. Yeah. The third one, which is my absolute favorite <laughs> sneaky one. This one's one. great. You email every client that did not pick you. What we do, and, and one of the secrets that, that I like to teach is I sent a bid, they said, "Hey, I'm going with option uh, with another contractor. He was about five grand cheaper than you, and I'm, you know, I really liked ex- your experience, but I got to go with them. They're just That's in my cheaper. budget." Yep. Yeah. Say, "Okay, no problem. Thank you for giving me the opportunity." And then I set in my in my software, I set a task to remind me in three weeks from today to email that client, or whenever I know that they're going to start the project. They, yeah. If they're starting right away, I'm going to do about three weeks into mm-hmm. the project. And I set it and forget it. I put it on hold in our software. And in three weeks, it pops right back onto my screen. And it says, hey, follow up with so-and-so. Yep. So I email them and say, hey, I know you went with a different company for that kitchen renovation. Just want to see how things are going and see if there's anything I can help you with. Usually when they pick the cheaper option, they're going to have problems, worse experience. <laughs> yep. And so they also don't like to don't know how to get out of those situations yeah. or are too embarrassed to call you after they told you they weren't going with you and they're going with someone else. Yeah. Those emails churn up we've, work. We've gotten a ton of business. One of the things that you need to know about doing that though, um, when you do that, it will turn up business, yep. but you need to know how to do a successful job takeover Yep. because coming in some coming in behind somebody who had a client unhappy enough to say, Hey, I'm out. I'm going yep. back to this other person. You got to make sure that you've got your ducks in a row yep. to take over, and it doesn't. But you don't become a problem job because you didn't do a good job takeover. Yeah. So and, just and, know how to do that. And we all know if that client is not having a good experience with the contractor, there's a lot of that on the contractor, but there's probably some issues with that homeowner. Yep. And so you need to make sure that you're doing your client engagement agreement. You're setting expectations. You're assessing the job before starting. You're revising the estimate because now the house has been touched by yep. someone else. You know, there's there's a bunch of steps that, that you got to go through for a takeover. Uh, sounds like a good future podcast. Yeah, that's right. This uh, <laughs> I thought the same thing. <laughs> this, this next one is one that uh, when we talk about it, everybody's like, whoa, that sounds like fun. Yeah. What a great idea. Yeah. It, this is a great one. It, it, this it takes a specific client. Uh, and it usually works best best with home remodelers mm-hmm. or even builders. Mm-hmm. Um, what we do is a housewarming party, right? So Jared hires me to redo his kitchen and main area, or Jared hires me to do a man cave or a basement. Yep. Um, it doesn't really work with if you were doing your master bathroom, but yeah, if you're doing awkward. a space that, that people can hang out in, mm-hmm. we like to throw our clients 
a housewarming party. Yeah. And I uh, say, okay, Jared, we just finished your kitchen. It looks amazing. You just spent 80 grand on a new kitchen. Let us throw you a housewarming party. What we do is we're going to bring some drinks and we're going to bring some barbecue uh, and we're going to set it up at your house. You invite all your, all your friends. Uh, for you, it's a way to celebrate your new house, your new renovation and get, get together. And to be totally honest, for me, it's a way I meet clients. It's yep. a way that your neighbors can see what we can do that, of, of what our company can do. And so I bring my project manager and the two of us hang out at the party and pass out cards to anyone who wants it. But for you, it's, we're serving food. We've gonna, got we've got all the drinks there available, and everybody's the hanging out yep. and having fun. Yep. There's nothing people like to do more than show off their house, mm-hmm. especially after a renovation. Yep. And if my client had a hundred grand to drop on a kitchen, their neighbors have a hundred grand usually to drop on a kitchen, yep. right? If it's in a neighborhood that needs renovations, all the houses need renovations, right? So let's do a block party. Let's do a housewarming party. Let's try to get as many of your friends and family around, so you don't have to do the, be the referral. I will introduce myself to them. I will hand out cards. They will come talk to me and say, this kitchen looks amazing. How, or, where did you or, find or, that? Or when, you know, when the homeowner's sitting there talking to the neighbor and like, oh, my gosh, it looks amazing. Who did you use? Go talk to Clark over there. Clark yep. did that. He was fantastic. Yep, exactly. Right? You're right there available for a conversation, and it doesn't have to be any kind of details, but you'll land jobs. Yep, yep. Yeah. So that's, that's number five. Number six on our grind list, the final one on the grind list, something that I did almost every day when I was first starting this company. I carried blank paper estimates, just template estimates in my truck at all times. It had no line items on it. It had no address on it and no price on it, but it was the, a template of it. Yeah. I would keep a stack of 50 of them in my truck. And whenever I drove by a house that needed work, I would look at the house and say, okay, I, they need exterior paint. They got some rot on that siding. And I would write a quote by hand mm-hmm. and say, hey, neighborhood, this is what we're doing uh, the, here's a quote. I'm already working in your neighborhood. I, I pin it to their uh, mailbox or put it in their mailbox. And it was a quote for work. And I'd write on it. If you want your house, uh, if you need any work on your house, here's a quote. So you can understand my pricing. I'd love to chat with you. Yep. That was one of my all time favorites. Cause it take barely any time. I'm already in the neighborhood walking on the job site anyways, and I can hit their neighbor's house. Well, and, and, uh, and it, it, it's so funny how, if you, if you get a flyer that says, Hey, I'm, you know, ABC paint company, I can do work for you. Or I, I I'm ABC paint company. Your house could be painted for $5,000. Yeah. Like, Oh, okay. Five. That's reasonable. Yeah. It changes the, the ability for the client to engage. Cause it, it puts a dollar amount around yep. it that helps them understand. A lot of people have no idea how much it's going to cost to yep. get it painted. You well, know? and another thing that's the full grind list, something that we do that's very similar to that. That's not a, actually a grind list item, yeah. but that we teach and, and, and to our contractors, of how to utilize your current jobs mm-hmm. is we put a sign in the front yard after the after a few weeks that we know that the client Client's is going to be happy uh-huh. and is going to uh-huh. give us a good referral. We put a sign outside, and then we have our office manager mail out two things. One, it's a letter that we write from our GM that says, hi, we're in the neighborhood, we're doing this, we're working on Snap Finger Road, we're doing blah, 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 blah. We, you know, we'd love to give you a quote if you have anything uh, that you need done. And at the bottom, we put a quote from the homeowner that we're working on. Uh, Mr. If, if Bob can, Jones said, blah, 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 yeah, blah, Yeah, so it says, I've really enjoyed my experience with ProServe, blah, 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 signed so-and-so uh, resident of Snap Finger Road. Yeah. Right, whatever it is. And then we second sheet of paper is an estimate that we write up for the average size house. Mm-hmm. This is how much it is to replace carpet. This is how much hardwood re- uh, installation is. This is how much paint is. This is how much new roof would be. Yeah. And it's saying these are generic pricing for a house your size. So if you're mm-hmm. interested, give us a call. And we'd always get phone calls from that. So that's not really a grind list. That's kind of marketing, but that's kind of our bonus. That's a great tool, though. Yeah, it's a great for tool. sure. Yeah. So all of this is put together because when you are in a either recession when you're losing customers, you need to build more. Mm-hmm. Or when you're starting to prep and prepare for that, and you've got your clients, but now I'm starting a new arm. I'm going to go in the investor world. So I need to go hit some investor Facebook groups. I need mm-hmm. to go start going to these different meetings, uh, the 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 RIA meet, the real estate investors group yep. that get together in almost every city in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are some places to go when I'm going into that multifamily. I'm going to go search that. How do I find those people, right? So all of these things are stuff you can do today 
to churn up that first, second, third, fifth client in your new venture, in right. your new market that you're trying to go after, or shoot, I need more of my current and I'm gonna do these things. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's this is kind of the ending of, of our three part series. Uh, but we would love to talk more about this stuff with you yeah. guys. If you want a copy of our grind list, if you want to talk through some other things, some issues that are happening in your company, join us in Chicago September 1st. We'd love to see you there. Or email us. Go to our website, yeah. proservealliance.com, uh, and we would love to chat with you about what issues you're seeing in, in your current company and how you set up a secondary market uh, like we're talking about, uh, like we've been talking about the last three weeks. Yeah, man. Thanks so much for listening. We will talk to you guys next week. See ya. Bye.